Knock, knock. I am the one who knocks. Okay, chill out. It's gonna be okay. Yes, it's El Camino, which I can only assume is Spanish for a Breaking Bad sequel. It's been six years since the last episode of Breaking Bad, and El Camino hopes to offer some much-needed closure for some of our favorite characters. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the movie, explaining its ending, and all its connections to the Breaking Bad universe. Yeah, bitch! So throw your housekeeper out the window, because it's time to cook. Um, you, you done, Todd? The ending brings closure to the character of Jesse Pinkman, who we last saw in the final episode of Breaking Bad, having driven off in Todd's El Camino. In fact, the events of El Camino pick up right where Breaking Bad left off, and even the introductory credits use the El Camino's red paint job seen here. But El Camino isn't just a car. It's a symbol for Jesse's journey. The Spanish translation is the road or way, making it doubly fitting that the second last shot of the the movie is of Jesse going down a new road, a new path as he starts his next chapter. But to really understand the ending, we must first start at the beginning with what is arguably the most important scene in the entire film. Important because it sets up Jesse's internal need to set things right. Start over. Start fresh. One could. Put things right. In context, this scene takes place before Jesse's capture, but after he's made a shit ton of money cooking with Walter, pegging this flashback around season four before Mike Ehrmantraut's death. Also ironic, this is the same stream where Mike dies, a place where he talks about his future will become the place where he will die. But Mike says that it's impossible to set things right. Sorry kid, that's the one thing you can never do. Alluding to his own backstory of killing his son's murderers, which is explored more in depth in season one, one of Better Call Saul. No matter what you do, it won't bring his son back, and no matter what Jesse does, it won't bring those he loves back. Jane, for example, who we'll get to in a bit, and Andrea Cantillo, who was killed in season 5 of Breaking Bad by Todd when Jesse refused to cook for Jack Walker and his gang. Mike also sets up the thematic premise of the film, that only by following your own path, your El Camino, that you can decide what's best for you. Only you can decide what's best for you, Jesse. Not him, not me. And the not him in this statement is our first Walter White nod in the film, which there are a few and I'll point out along the way. Jesse asks Mike where he would go if he could start over, to which Mike responds, Alaska. It's the last frontier. Up there, you could be anything you want. Which is where Jesse ends up at the end of the film, not to mention the close-up of the Last Frontier license plate hearkening back to Mike's line. So while it seems this scene may be an odd way to start the film, Vince Gilligan has carefully crafted it to set up our hero's internal journey. His external journey, having to get away and start a new life, starts immediately after with Jesse on the run from the police, having escaped Jack and his neo-Nazi gang. While on the run, we have Jesse hiding hiding from the cops, preparing his gun, about to get caught when they rush by. This is an homage to the first episode of Breaking Bad, where Walter, too, thinks the sirens he hears in the distance are coming for him, but they rush by him as well. Jesse heads to the only safe place he knows, Skinny Pete's, where it seems as though Pete and Badger have used the money they got for working with Walt in the final episode of Breaking Bad to buy some sweet new gaming chairs. Jesse is famished, having spent an eternity caged in Jack Walker's compound, and forced to cook meth. This feeling of being caged haunts Jesse, and there are several allusions to it throughout the film. For example, when Jesse rests in bed, he's haunted by the flashback of his cell. And even though Jesse has made it out of the cell, he is still very much a prisoner, unable to live any semblance of life now that he is on the run. If he's going to find his new path, he needs to get out of here. I gotta get out of here. We get a news report that confirms Jesse is wanted by the cops, but it's only until later on in the film that Jesse overhears a radio report that Walter is in fact dead, putting to rest any conspiracy theories that he has somehow survived, although we will get an important flashback which we'll discuss in a bit. Jesse takes three important items from Pete which help him set up his new life. 
One, a burner phone, which lets him call his parents. Two, a page from the telephone book. And three, Skinny Pete's car. They call on the aid of Old Joe, who we last saw in the first episode of Season 5's Breaking Bad. He helped Walt, Jesse, and Mike borrow a giant magnet from his junkyard to destroy Gustavo Fring's laptop inside the police evidence locker. Joe tells them that the El Camino sent out a lowjack signal, basically a stolen vehicle recovery system, which means the cops will be on their way any minute. Pete devises a plan to throw the cops off their scent by having Badger take his car to the Mexican border. When the cops arrive, he'll tell them Jesse came and took that car to flee to Mexico. This also matches up with the end of the film when Jesse asks Ed to deliver a letter and have him deliver it from Mexico City. Because the police will likely pick it up, this will help in corroborating the idea that he's in Mexico, not Alaska. More on that in a bit. Jesse takes a key from the same ring as the El Caminos, which we'll find is the key to Todd's apartment. This transitions us to a lengthy flashback featuring Todd Elquist, who drives the El Camino to the corner of Holly and Arroz. I'm probably mispronouncing that. This is a nod to Vince Gilligan's girlfriend, Holly Rice, and the Spanish word for rice is Arroz. Holly also happens to be the name of Walter's daughter. He takes his captured prisoner, knowing that if he were to escape, the first person he would kill is Brock Cantillo, the little boy of his ex-girlfriends. So even though he's out in the real world, he's simultaneously trapped. Back in present day, Jesse overhears a radio talking about a murder which the news claims to be Walt's last kill, a poisoning of a woman. This is a nod to Lydia, the head of logistics at Madrigal, the company that supplied Gustavo Fring with methylamine. She was killed in the final episode of Breaking Bad when Walt put poison in her stevia. Jesse is off to find Todd's hidden stash of money, knowing that Todd is dead. He killed him at the end of Breaking Bad. He knows that Todd used to keep his stash in encyclopedias, but when he gets there, finds nothing. But Jesse remembers something else, that Todd was always meaning to find a new place to store his stash, one that would, quote, require some engineering. So he proceeds to completely dismantle the house, and I love this shot here that Gilligan uses, almost as if we're watching a mouse in a cage searching for its precious cheese. We also have this unique inclusion of a tarantula, which often symbolizes a cruel or sneaky person, much like Todd. But we also have it in a cage, yet another metaphor for Jesse's imprisonment. There's also the symbolism of the snow globes, which feature characters trapped within a globe, and perhaps the snow hints at Jesse's eventual arrival in Alaska. Although that might be a stretch. On the television, Jesse's parents plead for him to turn himself in when we're treated with another flashback where Jesse helps dispose of Todd's housekeeper, Sonia. He even has to ride with the rolled up dead body in the back of the El Camino, which, when the back is put on it, kind of looks like a funeral hearse. But it's when Jesse finds the gun in the glove compartment and holds Todd at gunpoint that he eventually breaks down and gives the gun over to Todd. He knows that killing Todd would almost undoubtedly lead to Brock's death, and you can see it on his face how he wrestles with this fact. Jesse still feels like he has no control over his fate, something he seeks to change by the end of the film. Jesse ends up finding Todd's money in the fridge when he's interrupted by two fake police officers. They're here because they heard about Todd's stash, and with him now dead, it's free pickings. Bonus points if you caught the Vaminos pest control shirt here where Todd used to work. One of the men turns out to be Neil Candy, a well who built Jesse's prison cables in the meth lab. He lets Jesse go with one third of the money, mostly because a gunshot would alert authorities, more so than the feeling sorry for what he did to Jesse. We also get this shot in the flashback of a picture of Andrea and Brock, kept there as a reminder to Jesse of what will happen should he try to escape. Using the torn out telephone page and armed with almost a quarter of a million dollars, Jesse visits Ed, also known as the Disappearer. All he knows about him is that he owns a vacuum shop and drives a red car and more cage symbolism. We last saw Ed in the second last episode of Breaking Bad, where he helped Walt and Saul Goodman disappear. Unfortunately for Jesse, he's 1800 short, and until he gets the money, he's shit out of luck. It's also pretty fun that a vacuum shop owner sucks up dirty people and turns them into something clean. Kind of like a vacuum. Jesse uses the burner phone to call his parents and tricks them into meeting him, knowing the cops would be on his tail. He does this to get two guns from the safe. 
but I think the most heartbreaking scene here is when Jesse takes a moment to look at the still running tap, showing him that his parents literally dropped everything to see him. They still love and care for him, even with everything he's done. He also knows that if he does start a new life, this is likely the last he'll ever see of them. Jesse's last visit is to Candy Welding, where the boys are just having a casual night with some prostitutes. And in a ballsy move that would make Walter White proud, he strolls in and confronts Neil, asking for the $1,800. But when Neil says no, he challenges him to a duel. Oh! I challenge you to a duel! Now this was the only part of the film where I kinda rolled my eyes. Why would Neil offer to do a deadly duel? Maybe it was the lines of coke they've been doing, but it seemed a little far-fetched for me. Anyway, Jesse pulls the old gun in my pocket trick and ends up killing Neil and Casey, thereby taking all the money with enough to pay Ed to disappear. With the majority of Jesse's external goal, to escape and start a new life, nearly complete, we get two scenes which help Jesse complete his internal goal, to move on and set things right. This is done through flashbacks with his ex-girlfriend Jane and also Walter White. The first flashback with Walter occurs sometime shortly after cooking their first batch in the Winnebago, which we see here with the fresh bullet holes from the pilot episode. This scene is great because it shows us how far Jesse has come as a character and also because we get a cameo from one of the most iconic television characters of all time. God damn right. Walter is asking if Jesse knows where they can find someone who can buy 1.3 million worth of meth, alluding to their eventual hookup with Tuco Salamanca. We also get a reminder that originally Walter was only in on making this money just so that he could make enough to support his family when he's gone. He was supposed to quit after that. It prompts the discussion of what Jesse will do with the money. He suggests college where Jesse and Walter toss the idea of him being a businessman or a sports medicine doctor. I'd like to think that when Jesse starts his new life in Alaska, that's one of the things he'll consider. Ed drops Jesse off in Alaska to start his new life as Mr. Driscoll, even quizzing him on aspects of his new identity. This is where Jesse gives Ed a letter for Brock. But what exactly is in it? While we may never know the exact contents of what he said, it's likely to be an apology for bringing Andrea, Brock's mother, into this whole mess, eventually leading to her death. And with Jesse having taken the entirety of Todd's stash, having killed the two welders, who knows if there are some directions for a little bit of cash for him too. At the end of the film, Jesse has not only escaped the literal prison of his cage and being on the run, but his metaphorical prison of his life in the drug game. He has moved on his own way, his own El Camino. In the final flashback with Jane, a scene which takes place somewhere in Breaking Bad Season 2, Jesse talks about how he thinks her philosophy on going where the universe takes you is pretty cool. And that's what Jesse has allowed for almost his whole life. He's allowed the universe to make decisions for him. But Jane says she was talking metaphorically and that philosophy is bullshit. I've gone where the universe takes me my whole life. It's better to make those decisions for yourself. And now with Jesse on the road, he's finally ready to start a life, making his own decisions, starting life anew. Yeah, bitch! Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and comment below about what you thought of the movie. You can also follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. And until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.